I think we got it, everybody. It was a hell of a turnout. Yeah. <laughs> it's a little warmer than last year. Yeah, it was two degrees last year when we did yeah. this. <laughs> it's a little warmer. Yeah, it was chilly last year. I'm Andy, by the way. Hi, Hi Andy. Andy. <laughs> You guys are all out here to learn about uh, winching and recovery, huh? Yep. I suppose. Oh, no. I just came for the company. <laughs> you came for the one company. Oh, the company. <laughs> Who all here has a winch? Use them often? Not me. <laughs> I haven't used mine yet. I was going to say, you just put yours on. Yeah. So, um, I don't know, I just, it's kind of going to be a, I don't know, laid back kind of ask questions and try and answer them the best I can and we'll go out and do some scenarios and you know kind of get you familiar with stuff so you should ask who has any experience oh, yeah I know you got experience yep. <laughs> <laughs> anybody else got any like professional oh, experience? Professional? no off-road winching yes <laughs> yanking trees out of the ground in an orchard with winches yes <laughs> Um, well, I don't even know where to start. This is a hell of a crowd. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good thing. The, the pressure's on. Oh, no kidding. <laughs> Normally there's what, seven of us here? Six of us? Maybe. Uh, so has anybody got any questions? I guess we'll start with that. <laughs> you could talk about safety and like what kind of scenarios we would want to get, you know, that you, that you feel that... Safety. Gloves. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Uh, I use these mechanic gloves in the summer, and then I love these rubber ones in the winter because they keep your hands mostly dry and you get a little bit of cushion with the rubber. Um, I guess I'll just kind of start at one end of the table and go to the other. So these are the kind of newer, smaller, lighter weight snap clocks. Um, this is a Smitty built. I used it once. I was saying, yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. Once. Once. Yeah. And I wasn't even, I was pulling a third gen 4 runner up a little bit of a hill at Spider Lake. Not much of a load at all. That was interesting. And, That's uh, what we're running. No, we're yeah, that was back in October. <laughs> yeah, Teresa, when she got stuck in her two wheel drive, <laughs> hammering up that hill. Started winching her with this, and all of a sudden, it's going, <laughs> Brand new. I, that was the first time I used it. It's crazy. So, How did it fail? How did it fail? Snap ring just this tore thing. off. Oh man. Okay. 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 Go ahead and pass it down. <laughs> yeah. So, in the towing industry, uh, these are what we use. You're probably familiar with yep. this. Plus, they got ones with like an 18 inch chain on them. And um, this is a four ton snap block. Does everybody know what a ton is? 2,000 pounds. So, uh, Four ton snap block, this got a greasable sheave in it. Uh, I don't know, this one's probably 15 years old. No, that one's the older one. This one's probably eight years old. Uh, I've never broken one of those. Do they all have a hook or do you get ones with? You can get them without a hook. You can get, like I say, some of them have like a longer chain with a hook on them um, for like on a some rollback just have deck. A hook on them, so yeah, like some of them just have a clevis hook. Did you want to see that? Uh, does everybody understand what working load limit is versus breaking strength? Working load limit is what's supposed to be too, but it's always about uh, third, third to fourth, fourth, fourth yeah, whatever it is yep. for the maximum breaking load. Yeah. So if the working load limit is four thousand pounds, breaking strength is usually twelve. Um, so a lot of this stuff has the working load limit on it, uh, like the clevis has working load limit on it, three and three quarter. Four and three quarter ton. Um, if you don't have a pull point, a lot of these, they got these receiver hitch ones now mm -hmm. that you can just put in for a clevis. Um, Worst I, case scenario, you can just go a loop through a pin. Yep. Pin through the receiver hitch with uh, like the end of a end of a strap. Uh, what do you think about soft shackles? You know, yes, I'm gonna be honest with you. Soft shackles, I used them yesterday for the very first time. Back when I was in the towing and recovery industry, there weren't soft shackles and synthetic cable was like brand new. Right. So okay. I've actually, my Suburban has got a synthetic cable on it. That's the first synthetic cable I've ever had. I've always ran, ran wire rope. 
Um, you, I know a lot of people know with, with uh, any of the synthetic or even like the endless loops that we got here because if you catch them on something abrasive, you'll tear right through them. Yep. You're going to cause more damage than you will normally. Um, yeah, the like wire rope is nice if you do a lot of rock crawling. <laughs> yeah. For because you can drag them over the rocks and they don't get beat up, whereas the synthetical chew well, through them. Yeah. Well, the same thing with like the snatch block and the synthetic line. If it pops off at any point in time and gets uh, caught in here, you're going to tear right through it. Yep. I, I've actually there. got a, a, a waistline in my truck, a synthetic line that uh, broke off one of the trucks that I actually was working on. They said I could keep it. So <laughs> and, I kept it. And you also have to keep here. it clean. Yep. Yep. Yeah, yeah, we, we keep ours clean. clean. Yeah, we wash it every year. Yeah, you, you got to keep it clean. Out. Reeling. Yeah. yeah, it's kind of the same with any you know fiber stuff, whether it's a strap or a loop or whatever you know you have to keep the stuff clean the yeah. dirt and debris that gets in there tends to wear down over time same with uv when when know. they break yeah they get a little bit of a snap but Sometimes they're not they detrimental hurt, like but they're cable. not gonna kill you most yeah. likely <laughs> i've gotten snapped across the back i've gotten snapped in the legs by uh synthetic line okay okay yeah yanny was there when that uh snap block yeah. gave way in it what three four feet was all a flu i mean it didn't go far yeah we were standing right there i'm like ah there's nothing to worry about here it was just you know a real simple pull and she wasn't really stuck she just couldn't make it up the hill she had two-wheel drive and all of a sudden it just boom and like, that's crazy how it just broke i mean literally first time so uh i just put this out here not a toe point <laughs> you can google the really good x-rays yeah <laughs> Right. Google a tow ball into the windshield, windshield. of another vehicle. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. All the vehicles have like a little oval slot in the frame. Those are transport uh, slots. They're yep. rated for what, roughly like 400 pounds usually? Uh, it's basically it for tie down and securement. If, if you're looking at a like a unibody, a unibody vehicle versus a full frame. Versus a full frame, yeah. Unibody vehicle, you don't want to put a lot of stress yeah, on it. Yeah, they're good for like 400 will, pounds because they'll they rip will, through. They, they're basically, they're just sheet metal and they will tear mm -hmm. right through. Yep. They, they are, yeah, they're, they're, they're good for tie down, you know, transport. Um, you see a lot of uh, like high-end vehicles, beamers and everything, they actually have Eyelets. a bolt pin with the eyelet. Yeah, that's for loading on a rollback, that's not for pulling that's out for a That's for straight stitch. pull. <laughs> that's all that's rated for is straight pull. I've actually had one rip out because it was mis misused beforehand. The kind you screw into the, you pop yeah. the plastic yep, piece out, yep. screw, <clears throat> screw it in. They're actually fully welded a little bit on that frame, they're not solid. If you can grab an A arm, for when the tow truck has the wind up on the deck. The wheels, the wheels are the stronger points of vehicle. Um, you can grab those and you can winch out a vehicle in the ditch, anything like that. Um, yeah, I'll go over that with the continuous loop straps. Yeah. Um, a lot of guys running, like myself, I got a Suburban. And when you got muddy, wet shit, these dry bags are really nice to be able to throw oh, stuff in. Idea. You know, versus like a rubber made that you're stuck to a certain size, you can usually, you know, pack these and shove them in the nooks and crannies. Um, continuous loop straps, flat strap, uh, high lift jack. We'll go out and I'll show you guys how the how you use it basically as it come along. Um, that's about it. Yeah, any questions? Um, with the winch, you don't, if you get when you buy a winch, you should really take it out and pull it and wind it back in and under load. With right? a load, yeah. Yeah. So yeah. If you, I think you say like winch. a thousand pounds. Yeah, I just pulled my load. Jeep up my driveway. Yep. I just hooked it to a tree in my up by my house and just, you know, <laughs> I haven't done it pulled yet. it out. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I know there was a couple of people that needed to load. <laughs> yeah. Needed to load their winch, so we can do that today. Yep. Yeah, if you have one, probably you pull it out at least once a year, if not twice well, a year, yeah. and making so sure it works, because we run into issues with ours. Part of the winch maintenance, I can go over that quick. Um, I, I personally, I run cheap winches. I got a Smitty belt on my Suburban, and I got an old, cheap, rough country winch on that YJ that I've had for probably 10 years. If you use them, and you don't abuse them, they last. The biggest killer for winches or anything electrical at that point is letting it sit. I mean, I've seen guys with worn winches that they use it once every five years, yeah, well, and the next time they go to use it, it don't work. Yeah. Because everything froze up. Either the, you know, whether it's a solenoid goes bad in the box or something in the actual 
gear set or worm drive itself seizes up just to do the lack of use. Just running that winch in and out once a month burns off all the moisture that's inside the motor. You know. If you overwork it, you will burn your winch out. That that's too. why snatch blocks is snatch blocks are there. You can never have enough snatch blocks. Nine. Becomes redundant after nine. <laughs> <laughs> so does uh you have enough cable length for nine? <laughs> yeah. yeah, okay. You made it well, depends. I mean I, I ran I guess. Well, well, two, feet. two feet at a time, I yeah. mean you know. True. Yeah, so yeah. the snatch blocks you, like, uh, it's a lot. One snatch block will double your pulling power. So if you're pulling uh let me go on my uh, list. So Basically, there's three types of resistance. There's rolling resistance, which is like on a flat, either pavement or uh, cement, and that's usually 5% uh, of the vehicle weight. So if it's a 3,000 pound vehicle, you're pushing roughly 150 pounds or pulling 150 pounds on like soft gravel or grass. It's called gradient resistance, and it's usually 15% of the vehicle weight. So if it was a 3,000 pound vehicle, you're pulling like 450 pounds or pushing 450 pounds and then there's stuff resistance which is usually two-thirds of the vehicle weight or 0.66 percent uh, so for a 3,000 pound vehicle it's roughly 2,000 pounds so if you're pulling a 2,000 pound vehicle with a winch you know 8,000 pound winch we'll just use that for instance um, if you're flat pulling it you know just a straight pull 2,000 pounds you know, it's easily going to do that. And I'll say you're pulling a, you know, a 12,000 pound vehicle. So you'd be pulling uh, two thirds of 12,000, 8,000 pounds? 8, yeah, yeah 8,000 pounds. So your 8,000 pound winch is about max. But now you got to take into consideration your cable is only probably rated for 3,000 pounds. Most uh, three ace wire rope or steel cables rated for roughly 3,300 pounds. Synthetic 3 ace line is 3,600 pounds, so you got a 300 pound difference between steel versus synthetic. So in order to not overwork that, because you know a 3,000 pound cable, the braking strength is going to be around 12,000. Well, if you're pulling 8,000 pounds, you're over by roughly 5,000 pounds. So if you put just one snatch block in there, now you've cut that 8,000 pounds down to 4,000 pounds, so you're closer to 3,000 pounds. And you can put even a third snatch block in there, and now you got. Shit, I'm horrible with math. Eight divided by That's three. The <laughs> Anybody eight divided by three? <laughs> like 20, 27 or something? 27 yeah. pounds. Mm -hmm. yeah. We all have calculators on our phones. <laughs> so, so roughly you're pulling, let's say 2,600 pounds, yep. you know, or whatever that is. So between your three lines, you got 2,600 pounds on each line. And you just got to make sure you got a snap block that's rated for that whole weight, which would be 8,000 pounds. And like that snap block's a four ton or 8,000 pound working load limit. So you're well within your working load limit for everything you're using, the winch, the line, the snap blocks. So as long as whatever you're pulling on, as far as like a recovery point is safe as well. Does that make sense? <laughs> yeah, I didn't think about that a lot. I'm sorry, I'm just yeah. over like no, a, lot of, a lot of faces to look at here. I'm not I'm not used to the big groups. <laughs> Once you show it, it's easier. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we'll go out there and yeah. pull some line. Do you guys use winch blankets? Uh on steel lines I do. Synthetic I don't. You, you can on synthetic. Um steel I use pretty regularly if I'm gonna be let me put it this way, if I'm pulling something that I think it might break, <laughs> then I use it. Like if I'm out and something's just stuck in the snow a little bit, I'm not gonna throw up. You know, I'm not gonna throw, and usually for a winch blanket, this is all I use. I just throw a strap over it, <laughs> yeah. or a couple straps, yeah, or a jacket. You know, anything that's dense just to keep in case that line breaks, breaks. To hopefully keep it from, basically you hope that piece of cable wraps up in that dense material and it's not the opposite end that breaks. So, any questions? Nothing? <laughs> well, do we want to go out and spool some winches out? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. <laughs>
Nice day today, but it's super it windy to too. Be even nicer tomorrow. Yeah. Right? <laughs> yeah, it's like barbecue yeah. weather. Yeah, I think tomorrow we're gonna whip out the pressure. Oh yeah. You're not gonna get it running. I do too, but I mean, I guess they can go. I'll be next. So I'm filming. Well, who wants to use their rig for a full point?
I gotta climb up here. We had a problem with the first one. This is the second one we've okay. had, but it was in this. Uh, we'll walk yeah, it was the switch housing that we've had. But Smitty Boat was really good. They just sent it out. What's going on? They just sent it out. They no, didn't even no questions, questions asked. asked. So this is a good example here. You know, if you are using a snatch block or multiple snatch blocks and you're short on cable. And we've had to notch out some of the uh, plastic here to get down in here. So that's where we what we have to get into to get our hand in there and turn it to free spool it. Then you can pull the pull the line out. Yep. So, 
for this, all intents and purposes, everybody's safe to stand there. You can go ahead and put it in neutral and... One thing I wanted to say that, from my experience too, is, like I had said, you get excited when you're yep. out there and everybody's talking and all this stuff's going on. The next thing you know, everything's hooked up and you're doing shit. But for me, what I picked up right this morning is realizing how much are you actually pulling? Because are you pulling uphill? Or are you pulling sideways? Nope. You know, I mean, because all of a sudden well, you're, as you as you add as you add elevation every 15 degrees, you're adding 25 uh, percent of whatever your pull is. Okay. So okay. this weighs 4,000 pounds. 15 degrees, you're now adding a thousand pounds onto that. 30 degrees, you're adding another thousand pounds. 45, okay. you're adding another thousand pounds. Once you're over 45, you're basically pulling the entire weight of the vehicle. And if you're stuck, you have all that resistance on top of it. Whereas if you were just, you know, if you're lifting it straight up, it'd be 4,000. Yep. But now you're pulling the 4,000 plus the 3,000. Because of your angle. So you're actually pulling 7,000 pounds uphill stuff. Then you're getting into which as well. Yep. Yep, that's so that's where the snatch blocks snatch come out. And you can run up to nine snatch blocks. Yeah. 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 That's the one thing I haven't ever really thought of. isn't so detrimental but like the steel cable you can actually pinch and destroy the cable by overlapping it and then tightening it and you can bird's nest it too where you're yep. not going to get it out later yeah if you get a you can get a it it does happen with synthetic but it's pretty you rare usually get it you out. can usually get it out yeah, you can get it lays if, flat if, if it if it is wrapped and you can't get it to come freely you can usually hit the winch and actually pinch
if she bought a bunch of stuff. That's a factory 55, yeah. But it was kind of neat to learn how, you know, you can do it. I mean, there's probably different ways, but how to be weed that is synthetic. Well, that's, that's one benefit with the synthetic, is if you do break it on the trail, you can tie it back together and use it. Yeah. The steel line, you can. Yeah. Well, you can. It doesn't work very well. That was when Brady brought his. He got that free annex. Brady have tough stuff too, right? Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah. This is a cool stuff. I looked at those hard, those hard covers. So. I've added this pin for the easy removal of the handle. And then also on the foot, I've added a removable pin so you can take the foot off easier. Uh, these things are less than ideal for lifting anything, especially off-road. They sell a bigger uh, base plate or even like a piece I, of two by twelve. I use a flywheel. Okay, yep, and that works too. I just just something to old distribute the piece weight. Of crap flywheel from a vehicle, and it already has holes in it. So yep. I just use a wing nut. I got because these things are scary as hell using them to lift anything. Oh, oh, yeah. oh yeah. If you do use it to lift, mm -hmm. it, yeah. If you do use it to change a tire, put something underneath the differential, whether it's a rock log. Because in case this thing, unless you're on perfectly flat ground, then you can jack the rig up, you can move it all over the place on one of these things. Because it'll just sit and pivot on that foot. It is spooky. It is really spooky. Um, so put something underneath it just in case it does fall. It doesn't fall all the way to the ground, it only falls a few inches. So the removable foot is to put the winch kit on. I 
got the winch attached to your ass. Yep. If you're going, you're pulling me too. We got it. And you can do this without the winch kit. You can get by with a chain and a couple pieces of strap if you're careful. just two pins on springs and the pins are beveled and so as one pin goes in it pulls the next pin out and it just basically works itself up this up these holes all the way up so it's engaged
and then flip that lever the opposite way. Now you're just working yourself back. You want to just put it in reverse, and then you just work yourself back. This one tightens up. Don't lose your fingers. And this can get tricky. Oh, one other thing we never want to have here. Sometimes, I mean, you got to get off and do a little bit of work to get down the trail. <laughs> but you can also high lift yourself out of a rut. Yeah, or high lift yourself up and put, you know, rocks or sticks or, you know, whatever, something underneath there. If you get high centered or you lose traction or you get into a, you know, a hole or something, yeah, you can use it to lift yourself up. But yeah, you got to be careful when you're lifting. So then you're all the way damn, up the top and you're like, damn flex, damn suspension flex. <laughs> Wheel's still on the ground. <laughs> yeah, no, I like it. Yeah, like I say, if you ever use one to change a tire, it's worthwhile to spend five minutes and go find something, anything to put underneath it. Or your spare if you don't have to use your spare. Say you're taking your wheel off because you got a rock jammed in the caliper or something. You know, say you just gotta take your wheel your off buddy's to get spare. in there. Yeah, your or yeah, your buddy spare. Like I say, anything, a rock, a branch, somebody on the trail ride you don't like. Because <laughs> <laughs> jack stands don't always work. And they sink. And they sink. If you can get a jack stand that's got a Depends where you're going. You know, if you're going out to the desert, obviously you're not going to find a rock or a stick. But if you're in Minnesota, we got plenty of rocks and sticks floating around. So, any questions? You can go ahead. Yeah. 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 Y
go ahead and put it apart. Actually, just pull ahead and I'll pull all this shit oh, off. Trail ride. That's a little bit more. That's good. Like, oh, yeah, we'll pull out your winch and we'll wrap it around the tree. And the guys winch it in. In December, with the soccer rollers, I was at the front and I turned around my back down on trail so that everybody could get turned around. And I ended up tipping the left side of my truck off the trail. So I couldn't get anybody behind me. I was in the trail. So I got my high lift out and I started watching myself sideways. Well, these things don't like to work real good when it's like zero degrees off. tipped off the trail sideways um, with one of these this is an eight foot continuous loop strap um, you can take one of these put it around the wheel and now you've got a secure pull point you can winch this thing sideways forwards backwards you can lift it and it ain't gonna go anywhere don't do it don't do that. I, I'll, I'll let everybody try this out. I mean, it's a neat option. Yeah, I've never seen uh, that one before. Yeah, that's the only thing is, if you're aired down, make sure to air up if you're really stuck, because it'll pull the it'll pull the wheel right off the bead. So make sure you got air in the tire when you're doing this, otherwise it will it'll pop that inner bead right off. So, so would you be comfortable, like on, like say someone was stuck in the winter time? Yep. And they just know. This is how we used to do front drive cars in the ditch all the time. Because they're this high off the damn ground and they're buried in this much yeah, snow. Yeah, Jill Take pulls out. The wheel. Yeah. So, who wants to give it a shot, Jill? You want to try it? <laughs> so, you just hold it like that. Side. 
place. Like, the Raider all in the corner. 11 o'clock. Yep. And then you just kind of hold this but over there. And then you do the same with that one and get it over to the 1 o'clock. As it used to be. You know, watch this. If you're in the middle of a trail ride, that's the side. best option for you. And then when you get home, change it. I got it. Yeah. I got it. And then if you want to get that all the way down here. A lot of reasons why people go with this is just to pull lightweight compared to the steel line. It does take practice, but it's slick to be able to have that option. For one, if you don't want to go lay in the mud or the snow, you know, or try and crawl underneath to hook to a control arm or something like that. I ever wish I did that. I like to stay as dry as possible. Oh yeah. Yeah, if you got big enough hole in your wheel, it's the same thing. You can run it through the wheel and pull that way. People kind of look at you crazy, but the wheel is the strongest part of the car. It supports the whole damn car going down the road all over the country. You know, so, don't do this and yank on it with a strap because no. you will tear the shit out of the suspension. Yep. But if you do this and slow pull with a winch, you will not damage anything unless you catch a rock or something and you pull it and you'll see it. I mean, if, if it gives you any resistance, Stop, rehook, re redirect the pull. But if you don't come in contact with anything on the way out, you ain't gonna hurt anything. I've lifted cars, you can do this. And I used to carry cribbing with uh, six by six blocks. And you would put it here, and then you could actually run the, the cable up, and you could lift the car and never touch the fender. Make sure it's an eight footer, at least. It's just an eight foot continuous, what's it? Eight foot continuous loop. If yep. you if you look at that up on Amazon, the yellow one, I think they're yellow, the ones that are in there, I bought them on Amazon last year. They were like okay. 25, 30 bucks. Yeah, there's a lot of bigger companies out there that sell them for a lot more, like Wreckmaster, different companies out there that sell yep. them. Yep, and then more, this one goes there's, there's behind. On, uh, so, yep, you basically Facebook just take this up. A lot of stuff too. Yep. Yep, and um, that just goes If you want, there. I've got it up on my Amazon. It's yep. 26 bucks if anyone wants to. And then just pull on that middle down. Yep. And that's it. And you just kind of want to make sure that when you get it all set, you know, you kind of got them four points evenly spaced around the wheel. If you can't do that, go around it because there's a tree behind it. These in the ditch, that side's in the ditch, go on the right side of the vehicle, as you get the best pull, go all the way through the vehicle. The further side. Yep. Yep. Further, further side. side from the road. Yeah. Okay. And once it's evened out, obviously, then you're going to be pulling like this. It's actually going to drag, drag the car up to the road. And then once it's up on the edge of the road, you pull across the road to get it up on the road. Otherwise, if you pull straight along with the shoulder, it's just going to keep it right down the shoulder. Yeah. Yep. Just now, do you want to pull as, if you can, pull as linear with the vehicle as possible, right? Uh-oh, you're going to have a shake going home. Yeah. It's like one of your wheel weights came up. Yeah, I see that. <laughs> is that a rock or is that a... That's a wheel weight. Huh. That's a wheel weight. <laughs> 25. 
Oh, that's just, just a rock in a tire. You won't notice that. <laughs> a little souvenir. Thanks. <laughs> Any questions? Yeah. I did that. So, so if I'm up on the road, there's not going to ditch. This is an okay way to do it, or are we talking yeah. more like nose in a dick? Because you no. just talked about two different ways to do it. One is going through and pulling it up on the road. Well, he's saying whatever, you know, say you're, say, you know, the road is here and this thing's down in the ditch over there. You're yeah. going to want to hook on that side and pull. Okay. Because it's going to turn the vehicle towards okay. the road. Okay. You know, right if you hook here, you're just going to be pulling it sideways, but if you hook there, you're actually going to pivot. Okay. Yep. And in the snow, I mean, you got nice. Okay. Nice easy resistance usually. So, how did you do it again? so just kind of do yep. that. Get your, you know, get your big loop here like that. Yep. And then you can just drop the left side. Nine. Yep. And then just put this right yeah. around there. Yep. Yep. Get up to the uh, like the eleven o'clock. This one comes around to yep. the one o'clock. Yep. Behind. Yep. And then you just take this here and go right okay. through that loop. inside here and as it pulls okay. too far that ribbon will start to come out and then it's ready for the junk pile. Okay. This one's about borderline because it is um, so basically you got the external sleeve which yeah, is I just one inside there and the a brand new one here. Yeah. yeah well that's the actual rope. This is just a protective sleeve. Well, so if you're stabbed with metal wires. Yeah. Inside. yeah. What's in there <laughs> is similar. Yeah, yeah. Okay. But it, it's a continuous loop is what it is. Yep. And then there's still a tail off the end of it because they actually connect the endless loop in further. Yeah. And then that's the tail that he's talking about. It's taped off. So yeah, and it'll start to when it starts to unravel and pull out, you'll yeah. see that. Yeah, it'll expose here as it pulls apart. So I've never broken one of these. Knock on wood. <laughs> you ever broke one of these? No, I have not. I've never broken one either. I, have, I think I have. these I think these are I wanna say they're like twelve thousand. The one I just recently bought had different, like, if you tie it this way, this is yeah, a low limit, if you tie it this and that's, way, this and that's is a low just limit. It, um, yep. um, yeah, if, got, it's a, uh, if it's a choker, it does affect the the working load limit depending on, you know, if you're, if you're using it, you know, like this, or if you're just using it, you know, say around it. So who else got tree savers for your winch? This is my tree saver. I don't carry a tree saver because this goes around the tree just fine. One less thing I got to carry. I don't have to carry this and a tree saver. I'm a tree saver. <laughs> well, you can. And it's it's never, you can use your tree saver for so many different things yeah. too. You know, you can use it for a short, you know, if you're short just a little bit on line or, you know, you need it to move your, your snatch block out a distance, you know, to change your pull. And that's eight feet like that's eight feet this yeah because they do if you go into amazon they have all kinds of nope. yeah. yeah the six footer will fit like a geo metro tire yeah <laughs> these will fit i think you can fit all the way to like a 35 inch tire with one of these just about so they make a 10 foot but a 10 foot is almost too long yeah this guy's pretty much done for but yep. that's what it looks like on the inside, inside. oh okay yeah, that one's Look at that. 
this one's yeah, good. Yeah, so if you, if you read here, it shows your what your yeah. Yeah, like I said, Amazon 26 and change. Like, what does people think? I already have two sets of sand ladders. I have a winch. You got a spare got... tire and a high lift? Yes. You got a shovel? Yes. If you're in the desert and off sand, yep. soft sand, yep. dig a trench, bury the dead tire, put the Let's high lift behind it. Yeah, make a dead yep. man. Okay. And then just run a strap. Because I just, like, I can't justify a, a $400, no. $400, like, Boat winch anchor. anchor. Yeah. <laughs> I just said, so that yeah, seems I reasonable. Have one. Okay. But I don't really travel much out of Minnesota either. We got lots of trees. trees. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just like, God, it's a lot. It's, you know, four or five hundred bucks or something. Like, you can literally never, never, ever, yeah, ever. If, use. If, if I lived in the Southwest, I'd probably buy one. Yeah. But living up here, wherever you're going, join the state recovery page. <laughs> yeah. I got, I got I'm triple A. Can someone come out and help me? Yeah. Well, in the summer, this, the area is so tra heavily tourist. Right. There's, you know, I'll just be like, flag some guy with a Jeep now. Lifts 89 bucks, and that uh, winch kills another 60, 80. So for say 200 bucks, yeah. you're gonna get yourself a lot further. Than and a lot winch. of that you can buy at like a lot of that you buy at Fleet Farm. Yep. Fleet Farm. Yep. Fleet Farm. Yeah. 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 jacking down on that if your hand slips off that jack that jack that handle is just going to go as fast as it can and it's going to go further than it probably should but so. just the angles of it it's hard yeah like it's hard to get unless you have a really good rock rails it's hard to get a high lift under without damaging your sheet metal yep You got like some 40 inch tires, and your bottle jack will work. Exactly. So you got a half inch more 
distance between the ground and your differential in the factory. Well, that's a cordless drill, man. You just yeah. <coughs> and build yourself an adapter. Have you seen the Pro Eagle floor jack? Are you familiar with those? Because they have a they have a um, off road one. Is it like an air jack or an exhaust jack? It's, it's not a floor jack. It's just extra high. Okay. Like on my, my and, and all the parts are sealed. You can jack yep. it with no. Okay. You just run it and go. Yeah, with the wheels. Um, it's all sealed, so you keep sand won't get into the moving parts. Okay, nice. Um, They're a little expensive. It takes a little room in your but, truck, but you know. easy, smooth, no problem. So we take that with the summer. Yep. So. Oh, your bag jacks. They work. Like for like either air or exhaust. Yeah, yeah they work. You just gotta make sure you get one that's the right height because they are, you know, limited. I guess those are pretty cool. Anything that get anything enough up the pile stuff up. Yeah, you can even use your factory bottle jack yep. if that's all you got. I mean, sometimes you only got to lift it an inch or two to stick something under there for traction. Yeah, I have, I have those, like, those stand ladders. I have a set of metal aluminum ones and I have a set of plastic ones. And they, again, I bought off-brand and they're not super expensive. But Hell, if you got a Yeti cooler, just take the lid off yeah. and use that as a... <laughs> <laughs> I used to have like a tractor trailer mud flaps yep. with hex head screws in it. Just cut, cut one of those. Tractor trailer yep. mud That's flaps a and, uh, and a box of a cheap stainless mm. self set hex heads. Yep. And that's what, 10 bucks? Yep. Yeah. It's not cheap for it. <laughs> yeah. 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 And they can just roll it up and. Or just tuck it under your gear in the back. Yeah. Oh, I, I also like having a big rubber mat just to lay on it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I carry a. It's called a Jeepers Creeper. It's just a foam. Uh, it's made by LaSalle Corporation. It's like this long and it double folds. It's just a, it's a heavy rubber with foam in it for a creeper. I carry that just if I got to roll underneath the so I'm not laying in yeah. the slop or mud or whatever. Yeah, you never know where, where you're laying. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Or even just a free uh, tarp at Harbor Freight. Yep. Yeah, or a tarp, anything. Yeah. Anybody want to try a scenario of some sort? Or if, if you think it's gonna happen, if you let me try it, try it. They are, yeah, if you want to there are now some tow points, right? We were up at Dresser, and he got stuck, and they pulled him at an angle, and. Like, I, when, when he put it on there, I'm like, I would have cut the hole and welded it on the front and back. But he's like, no, I know what I'm doing. I'm like, okay. So he got pulled at, a, at an angle. That toe point broke off his bumper and went through the open passenger window of the, of the JK and broke the front windshield of the JK from the inside. Yep. Does everybody know what he's so, talking about as far as a, like a weld-on pull point? Yeah. So like, Otherwise don't, I can show you, we just yeah, did don't, them like, actually, like, don't, like, if there would have been a passenger there, he would have gotten a chunk of one inch steel this yep. big through his head. I would have killed him. Jesus. Yeah, so like, yeah, well, we'll don't, go back here seriously, when they, when they, when they, 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 don't fuck around. <laughs> oh yeah, there's one right there. <laughs> or right there. Those are, those don't move. Right, no, no, but I'm saying that's where, like a hard so, point, yeah. This piece that's exposed right here is, I don't know, four inches long. Yep. The piece that's behind this bumper actually goes up about another inch and lower another inch. Um, so it's it's put in from the back and then welded from the front. So this one you could pull sideways if you had to. But anytime you're pulling anything and you're stressing it already, say this thing's really buried, you want to winch if possible and not pull with a strap. Because that strap, it's so much inertia when it does go. Yeah. 
Whereas if you're just a slow pull, stuff usually starts to creak and make really funny noises before it breaks. Mm -hmm. Whereas when you jerk with a strap, you don't know it till the strap's flying through the windshield. Yeah. Well, and that's what I was saying is if you can pull as straight, as yep, linear as, as, possible as possible with the vehicle. Yeah, yeah, like I say, this one for sure is the the piece here is behind right. and welded on both sides. I know because I did it. <laughs> right. We were at FJ Summit, and it was one of the manufacturers that were building bumpers, and they didn't do that, and they had that just was their flat display over their steel. That was their display yep. model. Yep. Jesus. Uh, no, they he pointed it out to them. Well, one of the bumpers. It was like, yeah, you don't want something like this. Yep. Because they'll tear right through the. the yep. The pull like, right out. Just to pull, like I've actually like gone around the vehicle and like gotten in the woods a little bit so I could pull straight. Mm -hmm. Just you know, like yeah, it kind of sucks to get off trail, but like instead of trying to pull at a weird angle, I've just driven my Jeep around yeah. so I'm in line with with the with the tow point. They do stuff. Well, and speaking of uh, creaking and cracking and stuff. You got a steel winch line. If you start to hear that sing, run. You better uh, <laughs> let loose that line. Yeah, the world gets really quiet right before right before a steel winch line breaks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> had it happen. I've had one snap myself. That, that was a scary freaking <laughs> moment. I was I was stuck in the recovery. I, I couldn't let the, the car out because it was over, hanging over a ravine. I had to keep winching it, but there was literally. I was ducked underneath my bed, my flat bed, <laughs> hanging on that winch line, and and uh, winch control just went, don't break, don't break, don't break. Popped up over the edge and stopped singing, and I was like, oh thank God. <laughs> that is yeah, I never knew they could hear them when you're yeah. maxing a steel line out. Yeah. Oh, they make a really eerie. They make a really eerie sound, and like I say, it's it's almost such a high pitched frequency that everything gets quiet yeah. right before it snaps. I can snaps. understand what you're it's, saying. I've had things. It's, it's scary. scary. Yeah. <laughs> it, it is a terrifying sound that, yeah. that, like, even when I see vehicles being recovered on the side of the road, even though I'm not in the biz anymore, and I see it, and I'm just like, I'm gonna keep driving. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to be part of that. <laughs> You want to try freeing up your winch? Sure. Yeah. Is that the one you guys were welding together? Yeah, that is. Nice. Yeah. That looks really, really good. Yeah, we're going to add on the tire carrier potentially this afternoon. Well, like I said, you know, I'm going to do this like five bend in here. I was camping in the back of my Jeep and I was freezing. So I took my spare off and took the in there the one day and I'm like <laughs> where, is where it? the hell is it like and I'm looking and I see the pipe and I'm like what the heck Interesting. 
interesting. That's worn. That's high dollars right there. Yes, it is. Top of the line stuff, right? <laughs> Anybody else here have a worn winch? Uh, Jim, you have a worn winch? Uh, yeah, but it's in the shop right now. Oh, yeah, that's right. So you're, uh, driving a Hyundai. Your Hyundai doesn't have the worn winch. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> and I don't have a worn either. I have a spinny belt. Or, is that not working? Well, it reels in, but it won't reel out. So I'm thinking you might have something going on with the controller. Yeah. 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 The the now wireless? <laughs> Did you put it in or did you buy it? Mine? No. Oh, I don't know. I, okay. I think you can get it. But it's wireless, wireless, but... Yeah. So that's what you're doing? You <laughs> yeah. That's your bumper? Yep. Which which brand are you with? Did you get the hybrid one? I didn't get one yet. But that's okay. what I want to get. Yeah. And the one I looked at was the Victory. If you wanted what I for that you were looking, you got. If you wanted sooner than the rest, I say go Victory. Yeah. Uh, but now if you want to wait three, four, five months, you go go the other like brand. SSO. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Or that Victory's held up pretty good for you. Yeah. I mean, so I'm, far. I mean, I've had it for. Oh, I know. Yeah, it's so weird. Reversing now. Yeah. Yeah. You have to pull the control box. 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 You